Psalm 100 enters his gates with thanksgiving, enters courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Amen. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations. Amen. Then last time, John, Jesus said this, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Very, very good. Wonderful verse to memorize. Today's verse is from Galatians. Paul wrote Galatians. It's probably his first letter. He had the first missionary journey to Galatia with with Barnabas, probably around 47, 48 AD. And he probably wrote this in 49 AD. After the journey, he heard about, you know me, Thomas? Thomas? <laughs> he heard about the uh, the fact that they'd been listening to some wrong teaching and they'd gotten messed up. And so he had to straighten them out with Galatians. But one of the things he says when he gets to chapter five is very, very powerful for them and for us. And that's the verse for today. But I say something by this. You know what it is? This is how we live our lives. No. The Bible often talks about life being a walk. There you go. Walk by the spirit and you will not not gratify the no this this is something bad that we won't do but no that's it desire of the flesh very good so he's saying this he said listen you're living in a fleshly body now when we think flesh we usually think meat you know the, the, the flesh the, the, like the animals have flesh and we have flesh but in the bible the word flesh means more than that it means the whole natural man the part of us that wants to do the wrong thing the part of us that can be tempted um, and we can, we can, it can ease, lead us astray. So when we trust Jesus, his spirit comes to live inside us. And he says, I will teach you and I will lead you if you'll just let me. But we can grieve the Holy Spirit and we can quench the Holy Spirit by just kind of ignoring him and doing things our way and giving in to the flesh. And it gets us into all kinds of trouble. We wind up doing things we regret and, uh, and, and bad out, bad outcomes. So he's, and, and it, by the way, the King James Version has the word lust here, lust of the flesh. And while that's, a, and usually in our day when we hear the word lust, we think of sexual temptation. And that's part of it. And in our day, it's a big part of it. There's no doubt about it. But, it, but the Greek word doesn't just mean sexual temptation. It means all kinds of temptations. Like you could be tempted to covet things. Like I, I, I might be tempted to covet somebody else's big house or somebody else's fancy new car. Somebody else wonderful vacation. I think, well, I ought to get to do that. Why don't I get to do that? And that's a form of coveting. I need to be content with what I've got. Uh, you know, you could you could also have other kinds of laziness could be a desire of the flesh. I don't want to do anything. I just want to rest. I just want to relax. I just want to play. I don't want to do the work. That's that's the desire of the flesh. And and he said, if you're walked by the Spirit, the Spirit can lead you to con conquer that stuff and say no to sin, say yes to God. And be disciplined and conquer your lusts and conquer your wrong desires and, and live the way God wants you to live. So the Spirit can, can enable us to do that. It's a battle. We're, we're at war against our flesh, for one thing, and the devil and the world around us. You know, it's a battle. I'm not saying it's going to be easy, but the Spirit will give us the strength we need to do it. if We'll just agree with him. So it's a great verse to memorize. And let's memorize it now. But I say, but I say, but I say, but I say. Walk by the Spirit, walk by the Spirit, walk by the Spirit, walk by the Spirit. And you will not gratify, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. And you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. But you can do it. Say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the flesh. Very good, guys. Awesome. You already memorized it, so just quote it over over to yourself, and you'll have it locked in there. And God can use it to help you conquer sin. Okay, anything you want to say before I pray? Okay. Thanks, Father, for this opportunity to be together. Thank you for these kids. Thank you for your word. I pray you'd help us to get this word well learned, so that we will walk with you. We'll walk by the Spirit. Lord, we don't want to keep giving in to the desires of our flesh. When we do, we always regret it. We always hate it. We, we want to hate sin like you do. But Lord, you know us. Our flesh is weak. It's really easy to be lazy. It's really easy to think wrong thoughts. It's really easy to want something that you don't want us to have. It's really easy to be proud of ourselves and focused on ourselves or full of ourselves. 
Lord, it's easy to give in to the desires of the flesh. We don't want to, but it's easy. So please help us to walk in your spirit, not quench your Holy Spirit, not grieve your Holy Spirit, but walk in a way that will bring you glory. Lord, I pray you'd help these kids now as they continue to get ready for their next test, which will be next week, Thursday. And I pray that you'd help them today to concentrate well, to learn as well as they can, to, to really put forth the work and the effort so they can get this stuff learned well enough that they can do the problems on their own. So bless them and be in charge of us today and get glory through us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. All right. Uh, so we didn't quite finish, uh, but we will here in a few minutes. Uh, so we got to this, I believe. In this class. Unit multipliers, unit conversion. Um, what I want to show you here, what you need to know here. Uh, look at this for just a minute. You know that 12 inches is one foot, right? And, and, and this is one foot. And so if you divide 12 inches by 12 inches or one foot by one foot, you get one, right? Anytime you divide something by itself, it gets one, every, right? Every time. But since this is one foot and since this is one foot, I could write this as 12 inches over one foot, still one. It's just a different unit. You see what I'm saying? It's the same amount. Or I could write one foot over 12 inches, the same amount. It's a, it's a different unit. We call those conversion factors or, or unit multipliers. And so you can change the units. Um, so, so let me show you how that works. If, uh, if I want here. All right. Yards to feet. Now, so we got two units and all these kinds of problems, two units. This is yards and feet. Do you happen to know how many feet there are in a yard? Three. If you forget, I'll tell you on a test. I'm not I'm not interested in you memorizing all these conversion things. I'll, I'll tell you. They sometimes will tell you themselves. But I want you to know how to work with it. So this is 240 yards. Now, the, the, the conversion factors here, the unit multipliers, would be one yard for every three feet, right? Or you could say three feet for every one yard. You could write it either way. If I want to change 240 yards to feet, I've got 240 yards over one. And I'm going to multiply it by one of these to change it to feet. But the yards have to cancel. Are you listening? The yards have to cancel. So it's got to be this one. The yards have to be in the denominator so they will cancel out. You see one on top, one on the bottom. So it's three feet. And that tells me since the 240 is on top and the three is on top, I've got to multiply those. Three times 240. Are you with me? And so, you know, you can go over the side somewhere and multiply. Three times four is 12. Three times three is six and one is seven. Is that right? 720. 720 feet. Now, let me say one more time. I, I'm changing yards to feet. So the yards have to cancel. So my unit multiplier has to have yards on the bottom so it'll cancel out. That leaves the three feet on the top, and three times 240 is 720 feet. Now, you have to take my word for this. Some of you can look at that and say, well, if there's three feet in a yard, I know you got to multiply that by three. Do you see that? Listen, guys, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm, I'm glad you can think like that. That's good. And if you can get it right that way, that's fine. In, in many of these problems, you can. But I'm telling you, one of these days, this will be helpful to you and handy to you. And it could be handy to you on the test. So I'd really encourage you to learn how to do this, even though right now you say, well, you're just complicating it. Well, not really. When the problems get messier in some of your science courses and some of your more advanced courses, you'll be thankful that you learned this little trick, if you want to call it that, this unit multiplier thing. So we changed 200 yards to feet. Now we're going to change 200 feet to yards. So this time we got 240 feet on top, and I got them off by, some, by something that will cancel the feet. I want the feet to cancel this time and yards to be on top. I'm changing it to yards, so the feet have to be on the bottom to cancel. And there's three feet in every yard. One yard is three feet. So this time I know I've got to divide. 240 is on top, three is on the bottom. It's going to be 80 yards. 
Now, that's how you use the unit multiplier. You might say, well, wait a minute. I know if I'm changing 240 feet to yards, I know I've just got to divide it by three. That's true. And that's good thinking. You, you don't, don't understand. Don't think I'm telling you not to do that. I, I, I want, it'd be wonderful to do that. When they're that simple, that's a good idea. I'm just telling you, sometimes they get a little more complicated. You've got to be able to use these unit multipliers. Okay. That's why I'm introducing you to it now. Um, here's one. Convert 350 millimeters to centimeters. And this time they tell you one centimeter equals 10 millimeters. So my unit multiplier would be one centimeter over 10 millimeters. Or, are you with me? Everybody watching? 10 millimeters over one centimeter. Either one of those will be a unit multiplier depending on what you're changing. But this time I'm changing millimeters to centimeters. 350 millimeters. I got to have the millimeters on the bottom down here so they'll cancel. So I'm going to use this one. This one has the centimeters on the bottom. I want the millimeters on the bottom. 10 millimeters over one centimeter. 350 divided by 10 is 35. You're dividing because that one's on top and that one's on the bottom. 350 divided by 10 is 35. And you may have been able to do that without using that conversion factor. But this will make sure you don't get confused. If I had said, we got 350 centimeters, I'm going to change that to millimeters. This time I got 350 centimeters. Centimeters are on top, so they got to be on the bottom over here. And there's 10 millimeters for every centimeter. I'm going to use this one so the centimeters will cancel. And that'll be... 3,500 millimeters if you did it the other way. They didn't ask you that. That's, that's not the answer. The answer is what I did up here, 35. Okay. Now, if you feel free to interrupt me if at any point you want me to say something again or repeat something. I'll be glad to just get my attention. So let's do a few things. Now, I'm going to come back to these in just a minute. No, let's go ahead and do those first. One yard equals 36 inches. So you can write that as one yard over 36 inches or how what? 36. 36 inches over one yard. Is that clear to everybody? Just flip it over. 100 centimeters in one meter or one, yeah. 16 ounces in one pound. Or 4. one pound over 16 ounces. Everybody getting this, right? Clear? All right. Either one of those can be the unit factor, depending on what you're going to cancel. So here they say convert 10 yards to inches. 10 yards to inches. Well, they told me here one yard is 36 inches. So 10 yards. Okay. I want my yards to cancel, so I put them on the bottom. And I got 36 inches in one yard. So the yards have to cancel. And 10 times 36 is 360. You say, well, I could do that without writing that. Yes, 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 that's good. If you can, do it. I don't, I don't mind. I just want you to be familiar with this. 24 feet is how many yards? And they tell you here, here's the, here's the conversion. One yard equals three feet. One yard for three feet or three feet for one yard. 24 feet. The feet have to cancel. You got the feet down here. That's three. One yard on top. 24 divided by three. Three's on the bottom. So you're going to divide 24 by three and you get eight yards. You with me? Everybody with me here? This last one can be confusing because most people aren't very familiar with pence and shilling. So let's look at it. But if you follow my, the, the, what I've been showing you here, even if you don't know about pence and shilling, You'll get it right. In old England, 12 pence equaled one shilling. 12 pence equaled one shilling. I'm just going to use P and S. So 12 pence for one shilling or one shilling for 12 pence, right? That's, that's, that's the conversion. You say, well, I'm not familiar with those. You don't have to be. Just follow the process. Merlin had 24 shillings. How many pence would that be? That was the same as how many pence. So you got 24 shillings, and you got the, sh the shillings have to cancel. 
So I got to use this one. 12 pence, one shilling. The shillings cancel. 12 times 24. Unless I made a mistake. On the test, you better double check your work. Okay. This, uh, you, okay, you okay with these things now? Can you do it? Make sense? All right. All right. Um, now, I think we're done with this. Oops, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, Right now, we're doing a review for test number 10. Here you go. What's your name? Whatever you are. Camara. Uh, okay. If you don't, if you don't need another review about that. Okay. All right. Now, guys, we're reviewing for the test. There will be problems similar to these on the test. Take me seriously. <laughs> When's the test? Thursday, week from today. Look at this problem. Four different stores. The price of a gallon of milk was 286, 283, 298, and 309. Find the average price. What's another word for average? Mean. mean. Sometimes they'll ask you for the mean price. It means the same thing. It's not the median. Median's the one in the middle. Median, you, you put them in order and find the one in the middle. But mean, you add them up. Yes, and divide by how many there are. That's exactly right. Now, guys, some of you know what you're doing here. You just get careless. So you got to add carefully. Six and three is nine, and eight makes 17, and nine more makes 26. Is that right? Now, double check it. Nine and eight is 17, 20, 26. That's right. Eight and two is 10. Eight more makes 18. Nine more makes 27, right? Yeah. Let me check that. 17, 25, 27. Two, four, six, eight. Three more makes 11. 11, 26. Double check it. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 11. What do you do with that? Is that the answer? Is that the average? Divided by four. 11.76 divided by four. And it won't quite go three, so it's two. Four is eight. Subtract, bring down. Four to 37. Nine times. Nine times four is 36. Subtract, bring down. Four goes to 16 four times. That's good. There it is. There's this. Yeah, and this time you didn't have to because it came out even to the nearest sense. This is $2.94. But sometimes you do have to round, so you have to watch out for that. If that had kept going, you'd have to round off to it. 94 now guys listen to me before you move on to the next problem ask yourself does that kind of make sense 286 283 298 and 309 the average should be in that range somewhere you see what i'm saying and 294 is so that makes sense that makes sense i'm not going to double check my work to make sure i didn't make a mistake but it's, it makes sense if you'd gotten three dollars and 59 cents you'd realize wait a minute that can't be that's not even in the range. It's got, the average is going to have to be in here somewhere. You know what I'm saying? So think about what you're doing. Check your work. Don't make careless mistakes. Two and three hundredths. You've got to know how to write that down. Can you tell me? Two, two and three hundredths. Thank you. That's three hundreds. What's this? Two and three tenths. Two and three tenths. What's this? Two 
That's good. Okay, so there's two and three hundreds. We're not looking for these. Is how much less than, what does that tell you I'm going to have to do? Add, subtract, divide, or multiply? I'm going to have to subtract. Less than, I'm going to have to subtract. Three and two tenths. How do you write that? Three and two tenths. Three and two tenths. Is it zero two? Is that it? Yeah, that's hundreds. That's three and two hundreds. Three and two tenths would be 3.2. The first one after this was a tenths place. Okay? So I got 3.2, and I got to subtract. I'm going to put a zero there. We've done this a lot already. You could say that's three and twenty hundreds. Yeah, you could. It's the same as three and two tenths. I'm subtracting, so be careful. Ten minus three is seven. One, one, not seventeen. Now, listen, look at this. You got one more step. Write the answer in words. I'm not going to write it out, but you've got to write out the words one and, and 17 hundredths. That's right, with a T H at the end. It's one and, and the decimal, one and 17 hundredths. Okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. Okay. Price of a CD is $14.95. Sales tax is 7%. It's a tax on the CD. You know what you have to do first? Stay with me, guys. We have to do first. Thank you. Change it to a decimal. Move it two places to the left. You remember that? 0 0.07. 7% is 0 0.07. What do you do with that? Yeah. It's listen, this is the way I, listen, I say it. The sales tax is 7%. So you take, listen to me, 7% of 1495. 7% of 1495. And what does of mean? Multiply. 7% of 1495 is 0 0.07 times 1495. So again, be careful. Some of you are having trouble with this because you haven't learned your multiplication table. Shame on you. I've been fussing at you all year about that. You need to discipline yourself to do it. And so you say, well, I can't memorize this whole, oh, baloney, you can. You, you've memorized phone numbers. You probably know the names of your family members. You've memorized birth dates. You've memorized stuff. You can memorize. It's just hard work. <laughs> just do it. <laughs> memorize your multiplication table. And practice them every now and then. You know, you have to go over them. I'm telling you, I do too. I mean, what's seven times six? Yeah, 42. 42. What's nine times six? 50, nine times six. 54. It's 54, yeah. What's nine times eight? Two. Good. What's nine times nine? Good. What's eight times seven? Fifty-six. Eight times six? Forty-eight. Forty-eight times six. Five times six? <laughs> okay, that's something to remember. That's good. Okay, anyway, here we go. Five times seven is? Thirty-five. Seven times nine is? Thank you. And three more makes? Sixty-six. Seven times four is? 28 and 6 makes 34, right? 7 is 7 and 3 makes 10. How many decimal places? Everybody stay with me. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, right here. So what's the sales tax? You got to round this one. $1 and 5 cents. That 6 tells you to go up to 5. There's the tax. How do you find the total price, including tax? How do you do it? Add, Add them up. Fourteen ninety-five and a dollar five. Five and five is ten. Nine and one is ten. Sixteen dollars. Now that's not the tax. That's the total price. If it's the tax, I told them last period of, we may get beheaded there. The way tax, you know, we, they may somebody be taxing us over hundred percent. I don't know, but right now it's not that much. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm being silly. I don't think that'll tax ever go that much. I don't know. Who knows? Okay, now guys, listen to me. Listen to me very carefully. Several of you are losing lots of points on the test on that bottom section. You know what I mean by that? That bottom section has a bunch of problems like this every time. Several of you are losing a lot of points. You need to learn how to do these things. And it's not necessarily easy, but you need to learn it. This has a name. 
You don't have to remember the name, but it's nice if you do. Does anybody know what this is called? It starts with a P. No, no, it's called a proportion. Proportion. Yeah, you did. That's good. Proportion. Propor okay. Somebody said parable, which is not a parable. It's a proportion. All right, stay with me. Now, when you see a fraction in an equation, in any equation, a fraction that you're going to have to work with, what's a good thing to do first if you can? Reduce it. Reduce it first. Cross multiply will, will help in a minute, but if you can reduce the fraction, reduce it usually, because usually you're going to get smaller numbers, you will get smaller numbers, and usually they're easier to work with. This is the same as what? Five over six. Five over six. Two goes to both of those, you see. It reduces to five, six. Now, Olivia, what'd you say to do next? Cross multiply. That's how you solve proportions. Make yourself an X, and it means this, this up, the one on top here is times the one on the bottom over here. The one on the bottom here is times the one on top over here. It's cross multiplying. It doesn't matter which one you put down on the left or which one you put down on the right. It doesn't matter. So five times A is five A, and six times two point five. You'll have to maybe go over the side and do that one. Maybe you might be able to do that in your head, but six times five is thirty. Two times six is 12 and 3 makes 15 is 15. So 5a equals 15. Are you still with me? What does it mean? Who said no? Oh, you said no. You, you want to do it again? Okay, you sure? All right, cross multiply. 5 times a is 5a. 6 times 2.5. And 6 times 2.5 is 15. Now, listen, this is important. What does it mean when a number is written beside a variable? It's multiplied. It's multiplied. So the question is, what do you multiply by 5 to get 15? And the answer is 3. In this case, it's just real obvious, right? Yeah. If it wasn't, you could divide 15 by 5 and get it, right? Everybody with me? With me? I'm not sure what to call down call on Emmy or Camara. <laughs> All right. Okay. You're no. You're no. You're no. All right. So, so, so this is how you work these proportions, guys. Here's another one. Can you reduce anything over there? Look at me. Can you reduce anything over here? What? Yeah, that's the same as three four, isn't it? That's easier to work with. And again, you cross multiply. Four times b is four b. Three times one hundred is three hundred. And divide both sides by four. It might not be obvious to you what you multiply by four to get three hundred, but if you divide three hundred by four, you get seven and two by five. 75. That's it. Guys, listen. If you forget to reduce, it's not the end of the world. You'll still get the right answer. You're just making things a little harder on yourself. And I think this is one of the hardest kinds of problems you have to do because it's subtracting the variable. When you're subtracting the variable, as you will learn later in algebra, there's a, there's a trick to solving that algebraically, but you're not there yet. So you just have to kind of remember something. But in order to get the right answer here, if you think about it, are you going to subtract 1.2 from 4.7 or are you going to add 1.2 to 4.7? Can you tell me? Can you tell me? Are you thinking? Are you making your brain work? I want to subtract. Yeah, I'm going to subtract 4.7 minus 1.2. And that's going to be 3.5. Is that right? Now, guys, the reason I say that's tricky is because look at this. If I had W minus 4.7, equals 8.2. Do I subtract or add to get that answer? Yes, you're going to have to add this time. Even though there's a minus sign here and a minus sign here, this time you subtracted these two. Here you have to add these two. You have to think about the outcome. When you get an answer, if it's not, if it doesn't make sense, if you added these, you say, wait a minute, it doesn't make sense that I've got 4.7 minus 5.9. That wouldn't give me 1.2. It gives me negative 1.2. So, so it, i got to subtract these. Later on in algebra, you'll learn why that's true. But right now, I just try to remember it. So here, I'm going to add 4.7 to both sides. And I get 8.2. Let me show you another. Maybe 12.9. Let me show you why that's a little confusing. If you have W plus 4.7 equals 3.1. Oh, I better not do that to you right now. Uh, oh, I can do that. I can do that, I guess. No, I better not. I know you could do it, but let's keep it simple. It was 5.9. Yeah, I don't want to do negative numbers. Well, let's not for now because of time's sake. All right. What do you do to get the answer here? You got to add to this, but to find W, you got to subtract, right? So you subtract 4.7 from 5.9, you get 
1.7. Yeah. So you got to subtract these things. Look at this. 4.7 plus W equals 5.9. What do you do now? You still subtract. Yeah. So when they're addition, it's, you always subtract to undo it. But if you're subtracting the variable, it's a little confusing. You got to subtract to get the answer. Okay, let's do one more here and we'll stop. What's 10 squared mean? You got to know. 10 second power. What's that mean? It's 100. Everybody understand what that means? It does not. Listen, listen, listen. It does not mean 20. It does not mean 20. It's not 2 times 10. It's 10 times 10. So it means 10x equals 10 times 10. And you can already see the answer, can't you? X has to be 10 because 10 times 10 is 100. Yep. So you got to know what that square means. If it had been 10 cubed, it would be 10 times 10 times 10. Three of them. Get 1,000. Okay. All right, we'll pick up there next time on Tuesday. We'll finish the review. I'll take the test on Thursday. Anything you need to say? Okay. Everybody ready? Thank you, Father, for this time we've had together. Thank you for the way the kids have worked hard to get this stuff learned, and I pray you'd reward them for that. Help them to keep working hard between now and Tuesday to learn as much as they can, and then between Tuesday and Thursday so they can be ready for this test. So please bless them. Help us to bless you. Help us to walk with you. Help us to listen to you, to be led by you. We just want to be more like Jesus, so please help us. You know we can't do that without you, so please fill us with your spirit and help us to walk by your spirit. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you guys. Stay in the battle.